Well, good morning and welcome to James with Jesus on this uh, Saturday, February 11th. The assigned gospel reading for today comes from the 15th chapter of Matthew's gospel. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law from Jerusalem then came to Jesus and said, Why do your disciples violate the tradition of the elders? They don't perform a ritual hand washing before they eat. Jesus replied, and why do you violate the commandments of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your mother and your father, and those who curse their mother or father must be put to death. But you say, whoever says to their parents, any support you might have had from me is dedicated to God, is no longer obligated to support them. You therefore nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites! Isaiah prophesied well when he said of you, These people honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is worthless, and their doctrines are mere human rules. So I'd like to make a couple um, points here, if I can come up with them. <laughs> but first and foremost, uh, the distinction, which wasn't as clear to me in other translations as this one, when Jesus says, um, why do your disciples, or sorry, that when the Pharisees ask, violate the tradition of the elders? So their distinction, uh, what they're teaching, I think Mark's gospel refers to it as korban, which is, um, I guess there could have been a legitimate use, but then people were using it illegitimately, which was declaring that some of their resources were going to be dedicated to God, and therefore they could not be used to support even their own mother and father. Jesus responds with, why do you violate the commandments of God, not the traditions of the elders? But obviously this is far more important. This is one of the Ten Commandments, honor your father and your mother. So um, there is that distinction. And then there's the whole notion of what Jesus is talking about is that people are basically playing um, a shell game with resources. Uh, an excuse to not help one's own parents was because, oh, well, I've got this dedicated to, for God's use someday. And Jesus is calling out this uh, decept deceptiveness of the heart that um, you're not really going to do that anyway. It's just an excuse not to help, which, again, violates one of the Ten Commandments. So I'm going to close the devotion a little early. Anybody wants to stick around to see a few uh, daffodils blooming in the yard, you can stay with me. Tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday, S-O-U-P-E-R. And I share that because if uh, certainly University Lutheran does this, but perhaps others congregations do this as well, where we take a collection of both uh, finances, money dropped in the soup pots or uh, cans of soup or other good uh, goodies that for us locally, Clemson Community Care is where we uh, collect for them. So that will be tomorrow morning. So we'll have a baptism at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. service, both those in person as well as the 9 a.m. service will be online. So let's pray. And like I said, if everyone wants to check out some daffodils, stay with me. So, good and gracious God, thank you for the beauty of this new day. Thanks for the opportunity that it holds that there's uh, going to be gorgeous weather to at least enjoy the fresh air, maybe take a walk or do some gardening, uh, whatever uh, can be a means of relaxation and enjoyment. Uh, we give you thanks for Jesus' straightforward talk and talk that gets to the heart to not only um, examine our outward actions, but our inner motivations. So Lord, continue to shape us into disciples where those two are aligned. Um, not only for the benefit of our neighbor, but as an expression of love towards you. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I said, others can check out if you'd like, but otherwise it's going to be a two-minute front yard tour. So, yesterday I went to the mulch place and started sprucing up some of my paths. Got a little batch. I don't recall the name of these daffodils. Uh, they're a little bit shorter, uh, more dainty, but that's the only patch I have. And I've kind of lost track of track of them, but here in the front. And then this was the, the path that's working out. This, I believe, is called winter jasmine. Not a native plant, but I um, have it anyway. These are native. They're not doing anything special right now, but this is called blue-eyed grass. 
and it's a good native substitute for um, liriope or monkey grass. So, not a lot going on right now here. And then Lenten roses or hellebores, not natives, but they do, um, do bloom early, which I really enjoy. Different flavors. Um, I have a ton of these, so if anybody needs some, please let me know. I'd be happy to separate and dig up some. Uh, some of the grand, those, those are probably close to a, I want to say 18 inch stem on those. And again, I have to re go back to my memory as far as what these are. These are, I'm fairly certain, are Barrett Browning with the, the orange cup and the, and the kind of a, just a cream petal. These I know are 100% avalanche because they have um, just the way they bloom. Those got absolutely destroyed the foliage during that cold spell uh, between Christmas and New Year's, but thankfully they're blooming. And I think that's about it because the rest of the daffodils are, are of the same type you've seen. So have a blessed day. Bye-bye.